What up, Fortnite fam? It's Matt back again to bring you the latest and greatest tips and tricks to help you become a better Fortnite player. Today, we're going to be talking about the high ground and how you can keep it. The high ground offers plenty of advantages and you'll need it if you want to survive the final stages of a Fortnite game. So, whether you want to retake it from an opponent or keep it once you have it, here are some tips and tricks to help you get the high ground. To start off our high ground tips, there is one thing you need to understand if you want to have a good start, and that is that you need to make the first move. When starting a build fight, the player who places the first piece will always have an advantage over their opponent. When trying to get the high ground, being the first one to get elevation will already put you ahead, meaning your opponent is going to have to catch up. This works even better when you have a strategy you want to implement. This way you can start executing it immediately. So what piece should you start with? Well, it all really depends on the situation. If you are approaching from afar, you might consider getting a little bit closer before you start building. It helps if you have a solid base to work with, such as the base of a building which is harder to break down. In this case, use ramps. But sometimes the best build to place down first is a simple wall. Just make sure that when you do, you go directly in front of them since this will block their view. From here, you can try to box them immediately, meaning you can try to get some additional pieces and keep the fight low. However, in the case of high ground, place a wall, then ramp, then if your opponent hasn't reacted quickly enough, you can try to place that cone to prevent them from trying to counter your first strike. You know, if you do manage to get the high ground, you still need to make sure your shots hit. So check out AimLab today by clicking on the link below. There you will find an absolute treasure trove of aim training exercises that you can use to track, hit, and eliminate opponents. Best of all, routines are customizable, so you can prepare for any occasion. We guarantee you will improve your aim no matter what skill bracket you come from. If your opponent manages to outplay you and takes the high ground for themselves, you're going to need to know some tactics to get them back down again. If you've got some good aim, you should try to get some damage in while you can. In fact, before you even place your first build down, you should always try to land that first shot to put them on the defensive. Dealing damage is a great way of getting you closer toward that high ground. If you manage to land a shot, then it puts further pressure on your opponent that can make them stop building upwards in favor of patching up. This will give you an opening, so you can either get the high ground or box them in. For this to work, however, you need to make sure that your editing skills are top notch, and you need to get a good visual on them. It would be preferable to crack their shield, but often you'll only be able to land a single shot in before they manage to retreat back to safety. What you do next will depend on how they react to getting hit. Some players will continue to try for elevation, while others will box themselves in. In both situations, you want to try applying peace control. Cutting off your opponent is a good move. Never give them an easy way up. However, for this to work, you need to practice your angles. The easiest way to get a build on top of your opponent is from above. However, if you're fighting from the low ground, you won't always have the optimal position. This is why you need to be able to recognize opportunities and anticipate your opponent's builds so that you can put countermeasures wherever you can place a build. Remember, it's all about peace control and making it so your opponent either has to stop to break the build or spend a few extra mats trying to go around it. When you finally get that high ground, it can be easy to let your guard down. However, your opponent is not going to stop trying to get on top, so now you need to do the same thing that you were doing before. However, this time, instead of going up, you're keeping them down. Keep in mind that resources will be limited, so try using your counters smartly. You don't want to use all your mats trying to take down one single opponent. This is something many players forget when they think about retakes, and if you want to go far in competitive, you need to have the game sense to keep track of it. Speaking of game sense, the key to putting all of these skills to use is unpredictability. You need to make sure that when you do try to go for that retake or try to cut your opponent off, they don't expect it. You can do this in a variety of ways, such as placing ramps where you don't intend to go and then making a 180 and going the opposite direction. You can also use misdirection by smacking a wall you don't intend to actually take down. If your opponent sees these actions, they might try to counter you, but if your real intentions are well hidden, you can use the time they spent prepping against you to outplay them quickly. There are a variety of different retakes that you can learn, which involve placing down pieces and making edits. One of the more common moves is the 90, which focuses on you traveling upwards using ramps, walls, and jumps. However, even more predictable retakes exist, such as the high wall retake. 
This retake serves as a way to give you multiple options to move around without tipping off your opponent. By using multiple walls, you can create a barrier your opponent can't see through, which makes it harder for them to plan. Mastering retakes is best done on creative, so make sure you look up the retake you want to learn and start grinding it till your muscle memory adapts. Retakes are an important part of endgame meta, since you and your opponents will all be struggling to get the high ground at the exact same time. Often, you won't even be dealing with an outright tower, but rather a huge chunk of build that you need to scale with opponents on each layer. Before trying to retake the high ground, make sure you aren't leaving yourself open by walking straight into your opponent's space. One aspect about retakes that you need to understand is layers. If you don't understand layers, then you won't know when you have the high ground and how many times you'll need to perform a retake to get it done right. Say, for example, your opponent is two layers above you, then you won't be able to just perform the retake technique once and expect to be above them. This will instead drop you off on the same layer and you'll have failed your retake. Sometimes it'll get harder when there are multiple structures above you blocking your sight. This is why it's important to keep track of your opponent before and during the retake. Do this correctly and you can save on mats, but also you can drop yourself off in the optimal position. Many retakes will require you to time your jumps perfectly. In these instances, you won't be following the path exactly as you lay it down. Instead, you'll be placing a cone and then jumping before placing a new ramp. This creates new angles for you to travel upwards and creates a more unpredictable movement for your opponent to keep track of. For this to work, however, you do need to master your timing, especially when you're multitasking with multiple builds at once. Building up is not the only tactic you can use to get the high ground. You can also destroy your opponent's builds to bring them down to your level. Just make sure to focus your fire or your pickaxes on the spots of the build that keep it suspended. With any luck, you might also be able to deal some fall damage to your opponent which will make it easier to get a health advantage. Remember, destroying a build is only one way to bring your opponent closer to you. If you manage to use piece control correctly, you might even have ownership over some of the pieces you need to get rid of. For these, you might consider editing your pieces so that they disconnect from the main build. This can save time and bullets and make bringing down the tower much easier so be sure to keep track of all of your pieces. Before we wrap things up, don't forget to check out Aim Labs and find out how you can take your aim to the next level. Don't let your opponent get away, take them down. Besides the mechanical skills, you should also use the current meta to your advantage. You know that SMGs tear through builds, so use those when you want to clear an area. The Spider-Man Mythic and launchers are still in the rotation, so use those to get back up if you end up falling too far below. Recently, the Spider-Man Mythics did get a nerf, giving you far less swings than before, but you should still be fine to use web slingers to scale walls. Just keep in mind that you may have less webs. Well, that wraps things up for today, Fortnite fam. Did you enjoy the video? Be sure to leave a like and ring that bell to stay up to date with all the latest and greatest tips and tricks that we have to offer. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let us know if there's anything you would be interested in learning more about. Remember, the most important thing you need to have in your head while trying to retake is every possible option that you have available. If you keep track of this, you will always be one step ahead and hopefully one step above your opponent, no matter what stage of the game you're in. Once again, this is Matt and we'll see you in our next video.